In the Connecticut town of Brookfield, in 1981, demonologists said in Lorraine Warren record the exorcism of eight-year-old David Glatzel in the presence of his family, his sister Debbie, her boyfriend Arne Johnson, and father Gordon. Arne invites the demon to enter his body rather than David's during the exorcism. Ed watches as the devil moves from David's body to Arne's as he passes out and is brought to a hospital in a vegetative state. The month after, when Ed awakens in the hospital, he tells Lorraine that he saw the devil take possession of Arne. She tells the cops that a disaster is going to happen at the kennel and sends them there. Debbie works at a kennel, so Arne and Debbie go back to their apartment above one another. Feeling sick, Arne uses a demonic possession to murder his landlord, Bruno Sauls, by stabbing him 22 times. The Warrens' backing for his case makes it the first murder trial in America to use demonic possession as a defense, which sparks an inquiry into David's initial possession. Later, the Warrens see Kastner, a former priest who had worked with the disciples of the Ram cult, and learn that a witch's totem has been used to transmit a demonic curse. He informs them that an occultist had purposefully left the totem, which had caused the Glatzel family to be cursed and David to become possessed. In order to look into the death of Katie Lincoln, who was also stabbed 22 times, the Warrens fly to Danvers, Massachusetts. Investigators discovered a totem at Katie's missing friend Jessica's house. When Lorraine starts a reenactment of the murder, she learns that Jessica had stabbed Katie while under the influence of a demon and then leaped to her death off a cliff allowing the police to find her body. Lorraine touches the corpse's hand to help locate the occultist as the Warren family travels to the burial home where her body is resting. During a vision, Lorraine sees the occultist trying to make Arne commit suicide in a pitch black tunnel. Lorraine intervenes just in time to stop her. Lorraine informs Ed that the connection is reciprocal and that she feels frightened by the occultist. The Warrens go back to their Connecticut home to conduct additional research. After momentarily losing consciousness, and was subsequently persuaded to kill Lorraine by the occultist, but Drew intervened in time to save him. Afterwards, they discovered the totem within a vase of black flowers at their home. Drew hands at a book he discovered about Stregrian witchcraft and says that the altar the occultist works from needs to be destroyed in order for the curse to be released. They start to suspect that the occultist is active in the region when they learn that Katie attended Fairfield University, which is close by. When Lorraine comes back to Kastner for assistance, he admits that he has reared a daughter named Isla against the Catholic Church's mandate of clerical celibacy. He informs Lorraine that she became fascinated with the occult throughout his investigation and eventually turned into an occultist. When Lorraine finds the altar through the tunnels that Kastner has given her access to, the occultist discovers her and kills her. Ed shows up shortly after and uses a sledgehammer to open a locked drain hole to enter the tunnels. After being briefly taken over by the demon, he tries to murder Lorraine, but she saves him by reminding him of their first meeting. When Ed awakens, he destroys the altar to save Lorraine, Arn, and himself. After failing to finish the curse, the witch finds her damaged altar and is slain by the demon she called. Ed arranges the animal doll, the Volok artwork, and the cup from the altar in their room filled with relics. Despite being found guilty of manslaughter, Arn only serves five years of his sentence since he married Debbie while he was incarcerated. Ed takes Lorraine to a duplicate of the gazebo where they shared their first kiss. 